Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. In this Lightroom tutorial, you'll learn how to create the popular desaturated urban look that you see used a lot in nighttime city and architecture photos. But instead of learning how to replicate a single look with a very specific setting, you'll learn the technique behind it. So whether you want something that is subtle or strong, minimal or surrealistic, you'll know how to customize the settings to get the exact look you want. You'll also learn about a common Lightroom mistake that even professionals make. And it's one of those mistakes that you don't want to do because it forces you to do things backwards and it slows down your workflow. By the way, if you only have Photoshop, you can still follow along with the camera off filter. This is an easy tutorial, so whether you're a Lightroom beginner or expert, you'll have no problems following along. Let's start off with the primary and most obvious effect, desaturating the colors. There's two ways to do this. The first method is what most people do. Lower the vibrance until most of the image is desaturated, and then increase it back up with the saturation slider. This creates contrast between the neutral and vibrant areas. Another way of doing this is to use the HSL sliders. It's a little bit more work, but it gives you more control. Simply desaturate all of the colors around the blue and green range. You want to have a smooth transition like this. If you make sharp changes like this, you might get posterization or weird color artifacts. A lot of times, it'll look fine on the photo that you're working on, but when you copy it to other photos, the artifacts can appear. So to be safe, it's always better to have a smooth transition in your settings. Another characteristic of the urban desaturated look is clarity. Simply increase the clarity to your liking. Next, we're going to adjust the tones and bring out more details. You can do this by dropping the highlights and increasing the shadows. This gives a flat look, and the brightness might change slightly. For example, if we drop the highlights and leave the shadows untouched, it'll lower the overall brightness. So to fix it, we can add more contrast and brighten it back up. Now you're probably thinking, we're going to be doing this with the exposure and contrast settings. But that's actually one of the most common Lightroom mistakes. Why? Well, let's say that you're saving this as a preset and applying it to a bunch of other photos. It'll overwrite your exposure and contrast settings, which means that you need to retouch your photos all over again. Imagine fixing the exposure and contrast for hundreds of photos, and only realizing later that your preset overwrote everything you did, and you have to go back and fix every single photo one at a time. That's a lot of wasted time and effort. So instead of doing that, use the tone curves. In Lightroom, the tone curves has two modes. I recommend switching to a point curve mode, which you can do by clicking on this icon here. This mode will give you more control and precision. To increase the exposure, simply add a point to the middle of the graph and then drag upwards. To add more contrast, add a point and create an S-curve like this. The curvier your S-curve is, the more contrast it will add. We now have the bulk of the urban desaturated look. The last thing to do is to lift the blacks. There are several ways to do this, but first, let's get the terminology straight because people mix it up all the time. Lifting the blacks means making the dark areas brighter like this. Crushing the blacks means making the dark areas darker, and you're also cutting off the details in those areas. You can also lift and crush the blacks at the same time, which will look like this. Whatever look you want is up to you, but that's how you do it. The more you drag it towards the center, the stronger the effect will be. Another popular effect is to tint the shadows blue. To do this, go to the blue channel and then drag the bottom left node upwards like this. You can also add a node like this to adjust where the blue tint gets cut off. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Another common way to tint the shadows is with the split toning adjustment. It's easier if you don't know how the tone curves work, but the results aren't as strong and it gives you less control. Lightroom also isn't the fastest software out there, so if you have a large catalog, it's good practice to keep your developed settings minimal by doing everything you can in the tone curves. Here are some more examples of what you can create with this technique. We use the tone curves a lot, and if you're not familiar with it, I have lots of videos about it. In my opinion, it is the single most useful adjustment to learn because you can do so much with it, and it's also in other software like Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and even the Lightroom app for iOS and Android. You can find links to the videos I recommend in the video description below. Thanks for watching.
working on this video. If you like it, please remember to hit the like button. I also want to thank Thomas Logan for requesting this video. If you guys have any requests, you're definitely welcome to let me know. You can leave a comment, email me, uh, message me on Instagram, whatever you like. Anyways, hope you have an amazing day. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.